Good evening. We want to thank you for tuning in uh, for tonight's devotional thought. And what I wanted to do is um, maybe you maybe you've heard this illustration before, and maybe in in some different ways. Uh, maybe you've heard some of these points that have been made before. But what I want to do tonight is share with you um, an illustration that I heard one time about a pencil. And there's a story about this pencil maker uh, that lived off in a small village. If you could imagine a pencil maker living in a small village, everybody gets along out in the middle of nowhere. Um, away from everything, and you have this pencil maker by himself uh, in his hut uh, making pencils. He goes out, he collects the wood to make these pencils every day, and he spends a lot of time making these pencils. Um, it is a, it's a family trade. His, his father before him was a pencil maker. His grandfather was a pencil maker. Uh, his great-grandfather and so on all were pencil makers, and he's following in the footsteps of what the men in the family did, and that is make pencils. And so every this pencil maker, every time he would make a pencil, every time he finished a pencil, he did something very special with it. He would take that pencil upon its completion, and he would lay it on the table uh, in front of him, and he would sit down, and he would say, Okay, I want to share with you five things. Now that you are finished, now that you have been completed, I want to give you five lessons to remember. And I want to share those same five lessons with you tonight in terms of Christianity, in terms of your faith. The first thing he did is he sat the pencil down and he begins to talk and he says, First of all, I want you to realize everything that you do leaves a mark. Everything you do leaves a mark. Every word you say, every action that you partake in, everything you do or say leaves a mark. And as I think of that reality when it comes to a pencil, and I think about a, being a Christian and how that relates to us as Christians, isn't it so true that everything that we do leaves a mark? Every word we say leaves a mark, whether it's hateful words, um, whether it is uh, inappropriate language, um, every word that we say leaves a mark. Not necessarily in a bad way all of the time, because our words can leave a very positive and, and um, wonderful mark in the lives of other people. Our words have the power to tear people down, but they also have the power to leave a lasting mark that builds that person up and lifts that person up. Everything that we do leaves a mark, and that can be in a negative light. That can be in a positive. When you think of James 3, as we talked about a couple of uh, weeks ago now, three, four weeks ago, um, and it talks about the tongue and the power of the tongue and how difficult it is for us as humans to control our tongues, that we struggle with it. Even though it's a small member of our body, it at times it's like it controls us rather than we control it and it's so difficult and it talks about how the tongue it just it's like a little flame that can create this great forest fire the tongue it is seems like such a little member but it can create this devastating force this devastating fire if you will um if we're not careful and i think that that connects with uh, this point of everything that we do leaves a mark. And I want you to realize that everything that you do every day uh, that is related to people, whether you say things to people or you do things to people or, or with people, for people, all of that will leave a lasting mark. And for you and me, if even if it's not in relation to other people, the things that we do and say, um, they're going to leave marks anyways. And so as we think of everything that we do leaves a mark, it leads to the next point because the pencil maker says, I know that that's scary to think that everything you do or say has the potential to leave a really uh, devastating mark or leave a positive mark. And that's a lot of weight to carry around. That's a lot of responsibility. I know that's very scary. So secondly, the, the pencil maker says, don't worry, I've given you an eraser. So everything that we do leaves a mark, but the pencil maker gives the pencil an eraser. So when those things that are said that are not 
meant to be said or that come out in frustration or anger in, in moments of weakness. Those things that we do that we wish we had never done and we wish we could take back, the, the eraser is present for the pencil to take away those marks. And as you think about the eraser that's provided for this pencil, I'm, th I'm thinking about an eraser that is provided for us as Christians. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7 talks about how if we walk in the light as he is in the light, then the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And so if you think about the phrasing there, that is a continual process of cleansing. Now, that doesn't mean that you go on sinning and Jesus' blood just cleanses you and you never do anything to make changes or to be different or to, to uh, repent and turn away from that sin. You have to make those changes. You have to repent of sin and ask for that forgiveness. And when you do, the blood of Jesus cleanses you and will continue to cleanse you. But it doesn't continue to cleanse you even when you choose to stay in sin and refuse to repent of sin. So that, I want us to remember that. But as we think about this continual cleansing that is available to Christians, um, I, I'm, it's kind of like, if you will, maybe uh, you could relate. I heard one guy relate it to this way. It's like windshield wipers. You know, we sin and we repent and the blood cleanses us. We sin and it cleanses us. We sin and it cleanses us. And it's this ongoing process of cleansing. But with that uh, sinning and that cleansing, in between there is this repentance and turning away from sin, trying to change and be better. It's not just a staying in sin and relying on the blood to, to cleanse us. It's just like the, the Bible says, you know, we don't continue in sin and expect grace to abound. Certainly not. We can't do that. We have to change and make an effort and be adamant about that effort to get out of sin. And when that is our mindset and our focus and, and the way that we change our walk, when we do that, then the blood of Jesus will act as this windshield wiper of cleansing us as we are doing our best to stay on the right path. So everything that we do leaves a mark. And that can be a scary thought, but thankfully there is an eraser that is provided when those marks are made that we wish we would not have made, that we wish we could take back. The pencil maker continues, Everything that you do leaves a mark, but I've given you an eraser to take away those marks that uh, you wish were non-existent, those marks that are not good and do not help others and do not lift people up. And then he says, and thirdly, it's not what's on the inside, or excuse me, it's not what's on the outside that matters, but it's what's on the inside. Think about it for just a moment. Um, I have right here just a normal number two pencil in my hands. I also have a uh, plastic mechanical pencil um, that you can get. They have metal pencils. Uh, they have you have colored pencils. You have all these different types of pencils. But what makes it a pencil is not whether or not it is made of wood, whether or not it is a pla uh, made of the plastic and it's mechanical or metal or whatever else. What makes it a pencil is what is on the inside of the pencil. The pencil that is made of wood will make the same kinds of marks as a pencil that is made of, of um, plastic or, or made of steel or whatever other material. And so as we think about that point, it's not what's on the outside that matters, but it's what's on the inside that counts. That's the same for us as well. You know, it doesn't matter about your outward appearance. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside but it's all about what's on the inside. And so as we kind of think about that point, I'm reminded in Mark 7 in uh, verse 15, <clears throat> you have this instance where the Pharisees see uh, the disciples of Jesus. Uh, they eat with what they claim are defiled hands. Uh, and what they mean by that is they were unwashed hands. And so they ask Jesus, why are they eating with these defiled, unwashed hands? You know, and the custom, the traditions of the people then is if you went out to the market, if you did anything, when you came back, you would wash your hands before you ate anything. And there was a certain way of washing uh, the dishes and, and using the dishes and all of that as well. Uh, but 
they question Jesus. Why are your disciples eating with defiled and unwashed hands? And then Jesus goes on uh, to say a few things to him. He quotes Isaiah, I believe, and then he, he ends up saying in verse 15, he basically says, it, nothing that enters from the outside and goes into the man, that's not what defiles him, but you know where this is going. It's what comes out of him that can defile him because the things that come out of a person are coming from the heart. They're coming from inside. And God doesn't look at the outward appearance, but he looks deeper. He looks to the heart, to the soul of a person. And so as he looks to our heart, that's where he, he tries to see who we are and, and what kind of person we are trying to be. And so it's not about the outside, it's about the inside appearance. It's not the outward that defiles a man, but the inward. In Luke uh, chapter 6, verses 43 through 45, you have this teaching where you, you have the, the tree is known by its fruit that, that's mentioned. And then it goes to say in verse uh, 45, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. So the things that come out of us are the things that are in us. That's why you have so many lessons about uh, that, that are warning us and that are uh, insisting on the importance of maintaining a healthy diet of what you're taking in spiritually. Because if you're taking in a lot of the world, you'll notice that what comes out of you is a lot of the world. But if you're taking in a lot of the truth of God and spiritual things, you'll notice that what comes out of you in moments of happiness or in moments of frustration and, and anger and sadness is the Word of God, is is the truth of God, is is righteous things. And so as you kind of think about these points, it isn't what's on the outside of us that defiles us, but it's the inside that, that matters. It's not the color of your skin that makes you important to God, but it's your soul. It's not the color of your skin that makes you beautiful to God and unique and a masterpiece, but it's the fact that you were created in His image. Every person, no matter race or gender, is in the image of God. Therefore, every person is important and every person is beautiful and matters. And therefore, we don't judge based on outward appearance because that's not what defiles. It's inside. What matters is the inside of a person, your soul, your spirit. And so I think you kind of see the connection there with what the pencil maker would tell his pencil. So everything that you do leaves a mark. So be careful what you do and say. But don't worry. That might be scary. I've given you an eraser. So when you do things and say things that you wish you could take back, when you do the right thing, when you repent of that and turn away from that, ask for forgiveness of that, it can be erased by the blood of Jesus. Number three, it's not what's on the inside, or what, what's on the outside rather that, that matters, that counts, but it's what's on the inside that makes you important, that matters the most. And then number four, he, he tells the pencil, I, I want to let you know something. You need to know this. Every now and then, you're going to have to go through some painful sharpening. Now, I don't know if you, uh, I'm sure that you are familiar with pencil sharpeners, uh, but you know, you write with your pencil and eventually what happens, the, the point, the more you write with it, the more you, you are using that pencil, eventually that point wears down and gets dull and it has to be sharpened again to be effective, right? Because if you try to keep using it when the point is driven down by constant use, what you'll end up finding is you can't write with it. It becomes ineffective to do what it was meant to do. And so as you kind of think about that with a pencil, I'm reminded of verses like James chapter 1 and verse 2. Count it all joy when you go through various trials because it's those trials and tribulations that sharpen your faith. Abraham was tested in multiple ways by God. When you look at when he was asked in Genesis 12 to leave everything he had ever known, when you look at what he was asked to do in Genesis 22 to offer his only son Isaac, those were painful experiences. And you and I are not in the mind of Abraham in the Bible when we read those stories, but you have to imagine what he was dealing with, even though he had great faith in God as a human being, as a father. 
And so Abraham goes through these painful things, and in the, these painful experiences and trials, his faith is tested, his faith is sharpened, and he is more effective as a servant of God. For you and I, there are times in our lives where the world wears us down to the point that our faith is dull, where we are ineffective in serving for uh, the kingdom of God. We are ineffective in the work of the church, and we're going to have to go through some painful experiences to be sharpened again in order to be effective once again in the church for the kingdom of God. So as you think of of what you might be going through, we've been talking about that with Habakkuk lately. I want you to realize that whatever you're going through can be used to sharpen you to be more effective for the church, for Christ. So keep that in your mind as you go through these painful sharpenings. Realize that this isn't a trial of your faith to cause you to lose faith, but this trial is given to you and it can be a blessing for your faith, even though it's very difficult to view it as a blessing when you're hurting. But, but see how the sharpening can help. And that will help you push through to the other side of that trial. When you go through sharpening, it only makes you better. So it's, everything you do leaves a mark. But don't worry, I've given you an eraser so you can take away those marks that you don't want to be there. Um, it's not what's on the outside, but what's on the inside that counts. Every now and then, you're going to have to go through some painful sharpening. And then number five. He says, to be the best pencil that you can be, you must allow yourself to be held and guided by your master's hand. We serve God as Christians. God is our father. He is our master is terminology you see used in the Bible. And as his servants, as his children, to be effective, we have to allow ourselves to be held in his hands and to be guided by his hand. Now, how are you guided by the hand of God? I'm not talking about sitting and waiting for some revelation to hit you and you hear the voice of God, but I'm talking about spending time in the word of God where he does speak to you today. As you look at the scriptures, these were in, written by inspired men for you and I that are the words of God for us. And so we let the scriptures, Psalm 119, 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is what guides me and points out the dangers that are in the darkness and shows me the right path to take. God's word is our guidance. It helps us when we are trying to walk on this path to get uh, to that finish line in, in this Christian race. So to be effective, you can't lay a pencil on the table and expect it to do what it was meant to do, to serve its purpose, to be of value. This pencil laying right here is of no value to me at this point in time. But the moment that I pick it up and I start to write with it, it is very valuable for me to write. For us, we are ineffective if we are outside of the hands of God. There's a song maybe that you used to sing as a child. He's got the whole world in his hands. Talks about how nothing can take you. The Bible talks about how nothing can take you or remove you from, uh, from God, from the hands of God. For us to be effective as God's children, we have to allow him to hold us in his hands and to guide us in our lives. You can't be guided by God if you don't spend time in his word. Number one tonight, as you look at a pencil, I want you to remember that everything you do leaves a mark. So make it a point. Dedicate yourself to making sure that every mark you leave is positive. That the words you use are not tearing people down or judging people or berating people. They're not words of anger or frustration, but the words that you use are words that lift people up and pick those up who might be down because of the storms of life at this point in their life. Everything you do leaves a mark. Never forget that. For those that might find that a little scary, when we do make mistakes and we leave the wrong marks, the blood of Jesus can cleanse us from all sin. And it works 
to continue to cleanse us as we focus on finishing the race and staying the course of faith. So everything we do leaves a mark. We have an eraser, the blood of Jesus, that will cleanse us when we make the wrong marks. It's not what's on the outside, but what's on the inside that makes this a pencil and that makes this important. It doesn't matter if it's made of wood or if it's a mechanical pencil, if it's a steel pencil. If I want a pencil, I can use any of them to achieve the same goal because what makes them a pencil is what's on the inside of every one of, of those outward containers. And what matters to God in, in relation to us is not how we look, but it's what's on the inside of us. And every now and then, you and I, we're going to have to go through some painful sharpening in order to have a faith that is maturing and growing. So when you are going through that sharpening, I know it hurts. Stay focused on how this can make you better, how this can enhance your faith, how this can make you more effective in the church, in your communities. These painful experiences sharpen us, and when we are sharpened, we are only more effective, and we are only better uh, in the kingdom. And for us to be the best Christians that we can be, we have to allow ourselves to be held by and guided by the hands of God. Tonight, as we close out, I want to ask you, Are there things that you've done or said recently that were done in emotional high points where maybe you said things or did things because you were pretty upset and you wish you could take it back and you can't and you're, you know, you're really mad at yourself, frustrated with yourself and, and sad that you let that get to that point. I want you to know that the blood of Jesus cleanses us. If you're a child of God, Repent of those sins and get rid of those marks that shouldn't be there. If you're not a child of God, the good news is you can become one, and the blood of Jesus can act in that way for you as well. When you obey the gospel, you repent of your sins, you confess Jesus, you are baptized into Christ. At that point, you become a child of God. And at that point, the blood of Jesus works to continually cleanse you as you go through this life. Not so that you can do whatever you want to do, but it works to help you as you stay focused on living the right kind of life. We can't continue in sin and expect the blood of Jesus to just cleanse us as we continue in sin willfully. That's not how the continual cleansing of the blood works. If you need prayers tonight because of something that was said that has challenged you and you realize that you're leaving the wrong kind of marks, if you need to obey the gospel tonight because you realize you don't have an eraser right now and you need that eraser to have a chance to be clean and to get rid of those, those marks that are wrong. Whatever you need, whether prayers or to obey the gospel, please remember my phone number is 850-559-9575. You can call that tonight and we can take care of whatever needs you have. If you feel like you need to talk or take care of something during the days, uh, the number on the screen is the church office. You can call that number throughout the day, each day of the week, and someone will be there to answer, and we'll try to meet your need in that capacity as well. Or you can email us. But if you have a need, we just we pray that you don't put it off, but that you take care of that need. Remember all of these points that a pencil can teach us, and be the best Christian that you can be in your homes, in your communities, in your church that you serve with, Serve God with all of your heart and allow Him to hold you in His hands and to guide you as you leave a positive mark on those around you. We thank you for tuning in. Uh, we encourage you and your family to continue to uh, make good decisions with all the things going on outside and uh, to stay healthy, stay safe, and take care. God bless.